please help me welcome JJ Thompson, CEO of Rick Security. I've heard there's a cybersecurity problem out there. And, and I've heard that a hack happens every now and again, too. And I've heard that a lot of people spend a lot of money on it. It doesn't solve the problem. And a lot of people are wondering why that is. Uh, part of it is because security people are inherently arrogant. Uh, we think we know everything. And we have no idea how to talk to people. So those three things really don't work in our favor. But outside of that, there's the bajillion events and alerts that are thrown every day by every one event that happens online. So you click a button and 100 events could happen on a website. And sifting through the bajillion events, security analysts struggle every day to figure out how the heck do I focus on what, when, and what do I do about it. Management teams are struggling to quantify this, and, and uh, executive teams are trying to figure out how do I answer the board's concerns about something where I'm throwing money into a, a black bag that I don't understand, can't measure, and have no idea how to measure successfully. It's a pretty big damn mess. Scott Summers over here. <laughs> All right. So, so Rook is a security service provider that anticipates, manages, and eliminates threats. We were founded in April 2008. Terrible time to start a business for anybody thinking about starting a business. Make sure there's not a big recession coming. Uh, out in the Bay Area, we relocated here in, at the end of 2009 after collapsing from 19 employees to just me. Couldn't pay myself for three months, and it was a total mess. And this community has been fantastic at helping us get things up and going. It's the best damn state for starting a tech company anywhere in the country, let alone the world. And it's, it's an honor and privilege to be here. So uh, we're, we're incredibly excited about what we're doing because we think that our industry pretty much sucks and that the tools that are out there have, have completely and abysmally failed to deliver effective outcomes. So there's a bunch of great technologies. Millions of dollars have been spent on generating events and alerts that tell you all this stuff, and there's these great things called SIMs, which don't make any sense at all, but they aggregate a bunch of stuff, it's the predecessor to big data, and then you look at all this crap, and you filter through a bunch of crap, and you try to figure out what to do with it on a daily basis, and then people basically sit there and play whack-a-mole all day. That's a bad way to do anything, and in marketing tech people would go, I can automate that. I can predict what they'd even think. I think Kelly did that earlier today, as a matter of fact. So, yeah, we're, so, so we're out to, to fundamentally change the way this game works. And that's what we do every day at Rook Security. There's no problem too big, and there's nothing that we can't accomplish. And that's one of the great things about being in Indiana, too. People here understand that. They know that the, that the impossible is always possible. So here's the security space. A bunch of shit is collected, data, and you have to analyze it. You have to process it. You have to respond and do stuff. And that's one of the things that most security people don't do enough of, is actually do stuff. They look at a bunch of stuff, and tools tell them a bunch of stuff, but what you do, okay, that's the big challenge. And that's what we set out to solve. So there's a lot of problems out there. Here's things that people are worried about. Uh, and, and everybody knows that right now, security is waving the white flag and saying, we're all gonna get hacked. Just look at everybody else. Anthem spent $35 million a year on it. Target spent all this money on it. They had the best tools, the best people, everything, which they do. And yet they still got hacked. I think it sucks to wave a white flag. And we don't wave white flags. So when we look at the options out there, the staffing industry says, hey, you've got all the, we've got all the resources you need. Just come pay us for them. You hire them, and half the time they're terrible because they have no idea what they're doing. And you have to pay 30% overhead for it. The consulting industry comes in and says, let's do analysis paralysis. And yes, we do have an advisory services practice where we do analyze things and tell people a lot, bunch of information. And that's actually how we got started was we, we, we were telling people, here's what you need to do differently and then we started actually doing that stuff because we got pulled into running security operations. And after you've been on the outside telling people, hey, I think you should do this differently, and then you actually have to be the person doing it differently, it's an entirely different ballgame. It's completely different. There's no Monday morning armchair quarterback stuff going on anymore. It's on us. And we became a single, single throat to choke, which was cool because we took these types of ideas, process control, let's fix it, let's solve it, Let's wrap some tools and technology in it, all of which really did a good job at telling us a bunch of stuff and not letting us manage it effectively. And so our outcomes were terrible. And I'm the genius who went out there optimistically and said, hey, let's sell outcomes to people because that's how this industry should operate. And then none of our contracts with our vendors did that. They just had to throw stuff at us. So I'm the idiot who went out there and said, let's solve problems and get contracted to do that. We actually had to then do it. So to do that, we had to combine people, process, and technology, because all those industries are right, by the way, but none of them have the solution. And the solution's hard, 
Combining people, process, and tech is nearly impossible. And we've been able to do it. And it's been really exciting for us. So, so the way that we do things is we have an advisory services practice where we come in and analyze things. We help people configure things. We help them pick solutions, things like that. We have a managed security services team who actually does stuff with that and, and, and defect, uh, uh, defends networks on a daily basis and, and anticipates and kills stuff. And we have a managed threat response platform that we're about to release soon, which is really cool. And, and that's where it gets exciting on the SaaS side. So we know that it takes all three because we've lived this. And in living it, we realized that there's a better way to do it, and that's what we've been building. And we were lucky because Gardner came in with their magic wand and said, we agree, you are right, this is the way that you do it. Our clients also agree that that's the way to go, which is to combine all these three things together. And we've been able to actually go out there and get some huge wins in the most high-speed environments where you can't wait, you can't have anything go down, we've been able to prove our technology works. We came up with a fantastic idea that the, some geniuses from some marketing product management go-to-life company thing here in the area pulled out of our brains and put into a UI, and then another awesome company in town made that come to life. We've been able to, to, to and in that case, there were 500 subsidiaries we protected, and People, process, and technology, we combine them all together, we kick ass, and we're learning things together that works. Thank you so much for your slow clap and patience. Hey, good job, man. Good job. Good job. I, I imagine that our sharks have some questions for you. Uh, sounds like cool stuff there. Uh, can you explain a little bit about your revenue model? Revenue model. Uh, we have 75% monthly recurring revenue that's uh, contracted in annual and three year contracts. Uh, the rest of it is project based work through advisory. So, with the security threat, who are you guys targeting in terms of who are you selling to? Is it IT? Is it C level? Two, two disparate audiences. We have IT, C level, uh, IT traditional and then we have non IT C level. Non IT C level has been a lot more receptive lately because they haven't felt like the traditional C IT C levels have been getting it done, uh, which has been a really weird thing for us. So council's buying, CMOs are buying, uh, and they're paying like three times more than IT will pay. It's a really weird, weird thing. And then, and then on the other side, the traditional IT path has been really successful too. For companies that have security technology that they've spent a lot of money on with good people, and they need to glue it all together to actually make it work. What's the biggest aspect to your scale? What's the biggest hurdle? You know, usually it would just be people uh, and human capital, but there's a great talent pipeline here. Um, we have fantastic margins already. Uh, so I'd say the biggest problem with scaling right now is really channel channel sales program management and, and really finding a way to not have to do hand-to-hand -hand combat in the sales trenches. Uh, what markets you guys, uh, Midwest, US, you international, what are you target? Shockingly, we, we started with very large enterprise and then had to figure out how to sell down and very large and global. So so the majority of our, our revenue comes from global 500 and international organizations. So you mentioned channel, uh, you have direct and channel, you have a multi-channel? Right now we just have direct. We've got to build that channel program this year and a big part of what, what we were missing to do that was an effective product packaging and, and go to market. And uh, we're really close to, to getting that pulled together here with our partners. JJ, I imagine a lot of people have questions for you about Brook Security as well as cyber security just in general. I'll be here. All right, cool. Let's give it up one more time. Let's give it up one more time. Want more secrets from inside the minds of entrepreneurs and innovators around the world? Subscribe to our YouTube channel here and click the link below. We'll send you our best interviews and strategies for growing your business.